Kathleen Kennedy is still president. I'm not leaving. Pei Jing and Rogue Squadron is delayed indefinitely. <laughs> Ryan Johnson's trilogy <laughs> is shelved. Mask on. Fuck it, mask on. Mask, mask. And the Star Wars community is confused. I'm exhausted! Disappointed. <laughs> and on fire. <laughs> what a wild ride it's been to be a Star Wars fan. According to reports, Patty Jenkins' Star Wars film, Rogue Squadron, was shelved due to creative differences between her and Lucasfilm, which isn't all too surprising. When it comes to recent Star Wars films, creative differences are just as common as a director getting hired because of their trending status, then getting shown the door, due to them making something divisive. In the same article that covered Patty Jenkins' creative differences with Lucasfilm, trust me, you will hear the words creative differences a lot in this video. It was also said that Kathleen Kennedy would remain president for three more years at Lucasfilm and that Ryan Johnson's trilogy was shelved. And the reaction from both sides of the Star Wars community was... <laughs> Now, nothing in this article has been confirmed by any official spokesperson for Kathleen Kennedy, Patty Jenkins, or Ryan Johnson, but the fact that it's been over a week and no one has tried to debunk or deny it from Lucasfilm, Disney, or any of their official spokespersons, and Kathleen Kennedy has recently gone back to talking about the future of Star Wars and hasn't mentioned Patty Jenkins or Ryan Johnson at all, I am left to believe that these reports are true. Now, if they turn out not to be true, then, well, I guess I just made this video for shits and giggles. Oh, no. <laughs> Honestly, I can't say I'm too surprised about any of this. Kathy leaving Lucasfilm this year was always going to be a hard hill for Disney to get over, mostly because if Kathleen Kennedy leaves, for one, it's going to be on her own terms. We're done when I say we're done. And secondly, even if she does want to leave, who takes over for her when she's gone? I know a lot of people's go-to pick is Dave Filoni, but honestly guys, that's never gonna happen for more reasons than I can even count. But I'm still gonna tell you. For one, Dave is a good storyteller, but being president of Lucasfilm is more than just approving or denying upcoming scripts for upcoming projects. It's overseeing an entire company and all of the companies under it. It's a corporate suit office job. A job that Dave Filoni isn't even remotely fit for or the right pick for, and he'd never give up doing what he loves doing, which is telling Star Wars stories. It's like, uh, I was made for this. John Favreau is another person that many people think of when it comes to who could run Lucasfilm, but I don't think John is interested in that aspect of Star Wars. At least not yet. Like Filoni, he seems more invested in creating Star Wars stories, rather than being just a corporate leader. Now, would he be interested in taking on that role one day? Sure, maybe. But at this point in his career, I don't think John would want to stop writing these stories because that is what he would have to do if he became president of Lucasfilm. He wouldn't have the time or energy to write write or direct any of the Star Wars stories that he does, just produce them, and on a much more corporate level than he does right now. He's not going to be on set in the trenches every single day. For John or Dave to take over as president for Lucasfilm, that means they have to give up what they are personally invested in when it comes to working at Lucasfilm, and that's being a creative storyteller. They would have to take on the role of the suit the boss, and no matter what it looks like from the outside in, being the president of Lucasfilm is more about playing bad cop, making thankless choices, and being in long, boring meetings, and dealing with a lot of old boomers at Disney who probably should have retired over a decade ago. Something I don't think either John or Dave want for their careers at the moment right now. So. Who else is there? There are two other folks at Lucasfilm that I could actually see being decent picks for present, but who could actually be a home run that would make most people inside and outside the Star Wars community agree that yes, this was a good choice. And honestly, the first person that comes to mind is probably Kevin Feige. Word on the street from a good deal of reliable people is that Disney is basically willing to give this man fistfuls of money to get him to do it. And even though that's just word on the street, 
tweet if it's true and kevin was down to be president of lucasfilm one day i don't see him leaving the mcu next week i don't even see him leaving the mcu next year he's the literal glue that holds it together so for him to leave the mcu someone else has to replace him and i'm gonna keep it real with you guys i am not nearly as knowledgeable or as invested in the mcu to even start that conversation so for the moment i've got no idea who could be president of lucasfilm and even less of an idea on who's available to be president of lucasfilm after i watched wonder woman 1984 and realized that somehow we went from the discourse surrounding third act cgi films and comic book movies to somehow the rules of consent and body possessing. Seriously, Patty, how the fuck did we get here? Oh yeah, Jeff Johns, how you doing, fucker? I'll admit, I feel bad about this one because Star Wars is long overdue to have a talented woman direct a Star Wars movie, and Patty Jenkins is indeed a talented director. As for a writer, well, uh, I'm not entirely sure. Her friendship with DC's tumor on legs, Jeff Johns, is definitely a detriment to her career and 100%ly part of what brought down 1984. That being said, part of working on any Star Wars film means putting up with a certain level of micromanaging. Most Disney films or any major studio film in general will suffer from some level of micromanaging. I'm sorry guys, I know you can look at the MCU and say, oh no, they give the director's creative freedom. No, they fucking don't. There is not one major studio that gives their directors complete creative freedom unless it's written in blood. And let me tell you, they will let you know it's written in blood. Jon Favreau himself went through this with Iron Man 2. It's actually why Jon Favreau didn't make Iron Man 3. YouTuber High Top Films has got a really great video on it. I'll leave a link for that below, either in the description or in the comments. I don't know yet. That leaves us with Ryan Johnson and his now alleged shelf trilogy. I'm saying alleged because some people get weird in my comments and you know who you are. I can't say I'm all too surprised about this news either. Ryan Johnson's trilogy was announced back in 2017, before The Last Jedi even came out. And since then, the only update we've gotten about it from 2017 to 2021 has been, it's still coming. Now, that may be good if it's said by someone who's constipated or bad if you're a Jedi trying to not blow your cover of having a secret life, but it's not as reassuring when people are waiting for updates on your trilogy many years later. Beyond that, since the sequels have ended, Ryan, like Colin and JJ, has moved on to other things. He's got a production company now, a signed deal with Netflix along with D&D &D from Game of Thrones, and he's still got two more Knives Out movies in the chamber. And this may make some people upset, but I think it's better for both parties that Ryan isn't involved in Star Wars anymore. As much as some will love his work, others will hate it, and it seems like that's what Ryan personally likes from the reception of his movies. Now, some people will say, oh, you just don't want Star Wars to be weird. And let me tell those people, you have no idea what weird Star Wars is if you think The Last Jedi is the epitome of weird and originality. Unless you've had to experience Han Solo fist fighting a big ass rodent, the Jedi and the Sith teaming up to fight some Lovecraftian horror that was shagging the father on Mortis. The epic highs and lows of high school football. Oh my god, what the fuck happened to this show? Don't talk to me about Star Wars being weird. The Last Jedi isn't even really that weird. Most of its subversion really only hits on a pure fandom level. Or if you were invested in any of the story set up in The Force Awakens. Some did, some didn't. Que sera, que sera. Out of the many choices Disney Lucasfilm has made, the choice to show Ryan and Patty's Star Wars projects honestly seems like the right choice. Let's face it, giving Patty a Star Wars film before she was even on the same page with Lucasfilm was a mistake. Giving Ryan Johnson a Star Wars trilogy before he even knew what he was going to write was insane. Regardless of if you were or weren't looking forward to Patty and Ryan's films, many Star Wars fans are tired of projects being announced solely based on a director's name being popular at the time with no story in mind or script even done. That's not experimentation, that's just gambling. Gambling on a story not even created yet to be well received and hoping, hoping that it will be be finished on time for Disney's next day delivery content schedule. The frustration regarding the hiring, firing, and parting ways of all these filmmakers is that people are reasonably concerned why are so many folks being brought into Lucasfilm before Lucasfilm is even sure they want to bring their stories to life. To be honest, it feels like Disney wants a Richard McQuan type director, someone who can come in and get the story they want 
on time and under budget, but they also want to hire someone with a visual or creative style that would get folks buzzing about them doing a Star Wars movie. But the problem is, you can't have it both ways. Marvel knows this. That's why either they hire the Richard McQuan type directors that will get them the story they want, when they want it, and how they want it, or they will sometimes take a risk with a more distinct type director and hope it works out. But that second time is very rare and even then, they will micromanage that director. Now I could just place all the blame on Lucasfilm, and I have and will continue to criticize the choices they have made in the past, yet many of the major creative choices that have consistently derailed or caused hiccups with Disney Star Wars has been through Disney, specifically Bob Iger or <clears throat> Alan Horn. Bob Iger did his job as CEO of Disney in terms of helping them make money and try to have good PR, but he's also made a lot of choices that have left Disney with the reputation as hard to work with, creatively bankrupt, and trying to please everyone but pleasing no one. The George Lucas Fallout. That's Iger. Rushing the sequel trilogy to the point that Oscar winner Michael Arnott had to drop out. That's Iger. Rushing the sequel trilogy to the point that Kathleen Kennedy and J.J. Abrams were asking for more time to properly make The Force Awakens because J.J. and Kasten want to write the script from scratch instead of working on an uncompleted rough draft for Michael Arnott as well as take time to make the movie The Force Awakens before it had to come out in theaters but got denied? That's Iger. Star Wars isn't one of Disney's smaller IPs and Iger isn't some absent father who only pops in on his kids every once in a few months to make sure the house is on fire and no one is shagging the maid. Bob Iger was very involved with Star Wars. Bob Chapek may not be the most popular guy with the Disney Park folks, but Kevin Feige seems to believe in Bob Chapek and Kevin is making his own Star Wars film, so let's see where things go there. And while Michelle Redwan may wear that permanent grin on her face like she just killed a Robin and seems to enjoy talking about Ben Sill's death a little too much, both seem to have made more reasonable choices than ones that have been made in the last few years. And love or hate Kathleen Kennedy, love or hate how she's ran Lucasfilm, there's almost no names that I can think of of people who are willing to become president of Lucasfilm due to other obligations or wanting to take on the role of president till both Disney and Lucasfilm figure out where they're taking Star Wars and learn to give people enough time to take it there. Some say that the MCU didn't know where they were taking their franchise back then, but I should remind everyone that 2008 Disney is nowhere near comparable to 2021 Disney. Back in 2008, Warner Brothers were seen as the respectable studio and was whooping everybody's asses. Now in 2021, they're known as a studio that wants to fist fight Uncle Dennis in an Arby's parking lot for creative freedom and streaming release dates. Can I get a waffle? Can I please get a waffle? John Favreau didn't have any plans on building a Sam Mac universe around Iron Man back in 2008, but John Favreau wasn't running Marvel or Disney. He was just a director making a movie. It's not even remotely comparable. And anyone trying to compare 2008 Iron Man to 2021 Disney Star Wars has either no idea how the film industry works or is just talking because they like to look at their own words on Twitter. I don't know if Chapek will be better than Iger, if he'll be worse than Iger, if he'll be the same. Only time will tell. What I do know is that Kathleen Kennedy and Bob Chapek have to sit down with each other and think about where they want to take the future of Star Wars, what directors they want to do it with, and then sit down with those directors and make sure they're all on the same page before giving them anything and definitely before announcing them to the public. I get it. I do. Disney gave Lucasfilm no time with creating the sequel trilogy. It's wildly known. I've literally talked about it so many different times on this channel. So it was much harder to secure a director for a three film deal that would mean basically losing a decade of their life and having to work with Disney. That doesn't help that Bob Iger killed the chances of working with George Lucas. That doesn't help that Bob Iger discarded George Lucas' treatments. That doesn't help that Bob Iger likely was the one you had to go through when it came to throwing out J.J. Abrams' outline because again, Bob Iger was overseeing the trilogy with Alan Horn, but that's over now. Bob Iger is gone. Alan Horn is gone next month. It's time for change. None of this announcing a director, and only after folks have hype for this director looking over their work to learn that y'all ain't vibing like that. I'm personally already writing off Taika Waititi's Star Wars film as never happening until I'm actually sitting in the theater 
watching it. Lucasfilm seems to have figured things out with the Favreauverse. The Ahsoka series seems to be in the bag. Kenobi had a rough patch for a moment, but it seems all good now. Not sure what's up with the Acolyte, I don't think anyone knows yet. New Republic Rangers is dead in the water, and that's kinda, well, not Lucasfilm's fault. Lando seems to be in limbo till the scripts are done and Donald Glover is available, so I'm hoping that stays alive. And then there's Andor. <laughs> I have nothing against Ando, I just really love using this meme. So for the most part, a few hiccups aside, many of which were out of the control of Lucasfilm, they seem to have their shows running smoothly. But why is that? Why does Lucasfilm seem to have it in the bag with the shows, but the movies are basically all over the place? Well, here's the thing. Streaming shows wouldn't need to worry about international box office numbers, wouldn't have to worry about being banned in theaters in other countries because a director said this or that, or cast this person or that person. Fewer distribution worries, or worrying that little Timmy dipshit might get bored or racist Uncle Freddy might get triggered. And that's the sad reality of streaming services. You have a better chance of creative freedom, both in terms of story story, length, how long it takes to make these, and casting on a streaming than you would with theaters. Nothing replaces the theater experience. But there's a reason why so many directors like Uncle Marty go to streaming services to tell their stories. There are just fewer hands in the pot in comparison to the international theatrical releases. This may be a hard pill to swallow for lots of people who only look at movies within the context of consumer or fandoms waiting for content, but filmmaking in regards to distribution, which is handled at the highest studio level, is a cold, soulless, pragmatic affair that only sees numbers and profit. That is their job. This is a big reason why Star Wars movies keep falling through, but for the most part, the shows don't. Releasing major studio movies are not as black and white as FilmTube and Film Twitter make you think they are. Yes, with streaming platforms, you still need to go through a certain level of checks and balances, but all of that pales in comparison to the theatrical release machine of major studios. The theater experience is a business, an expensive cutthroat business with many, many people involved in it. All I can say is that the only way to fix the problem with Disney Star Wars movies is for them to take their time understand what they want, and greenlight the Babu Frick trilogy. Hey everyone, thank you for watching today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, how about you smash the like button, hit the subscribe button, and be sure to comment your thoughts on what do you think Disney Lucasfilm should do to improve their track record with producing Star Wars movies. Special thank you to my Patreons. Look at these lovely souls of space dust. Not you, Jen. You're Stardust. A big shout out to my sugar daddies, my sugar mamas, my sugar siblings, aka my Patreon producers. Gina H. Hiriko M. Jay-Z. Lei Batu Lubroj. I am sure I'm messing up that name. Molly. Prowl. M. Love you guys. Thank you for the support. Y'all be easy. I'll see you guys next time.